Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying an action thriller film based on true events entitled Captain Phillips. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins in March 2009, Captain Richard Phillips is packing his bags, checking his passport, and confirming his itinerary before heading to the airport with his wife Andrea, at their home in Underhill, Vermont. They express their anxiety about the changing times and wonder how their children will do, knowing that it is a very different world from the one they grew up in and that finding a decent job is not as easy. Later, they arrive at the airport, kiss each other goodbye, and Phillips heads inside. Meanwhile, a convoy of vans carrying local mercenaries arrives at Ale, a small settlement on Somalia's coast. Abdulwali Muse is resting on the hard ground inside a hut when a small boy rushes to wake him up. The mercenaries of a warlord named Garad, are unhappy that the villagers aren't at sea looking for ships to hijack. The village elder explains that they've done a previous successful hijacking last week and the week before that but the mercs weren't having it and pressured them to get in their boats and go find another target. Hafan is the village's chief. Hafan instructs Muse and another skiff commander named Asan to choose three men each and prepare their skiffs for the voyage. The men crowd together in an attempt to persuade Muse or Azad to choose them. They are likely to be chosen if they have the expertise and are something to use as a bribe. The bribe is a sprig of the herb cot, which when chewed causes euphoria and a loss of appetite. This is helpful for the sea raid. Muse's crew consists of a young Somali named, Bilal, Elmi, and Naji who's from another village. The Somalis load supplies and head to the mother boat. Later, Azad instructs Muse to keep out of his way this time and calls him a thin rat. Muse despises Azad, and he didn't like it when Azad starts bossing his man, Elmi around. Captain Phillips arrives at the port of Salala in Oman to take command of the MV Maersk Alabama, a container ship. Phillips greets Shane Murphy, his first mate, who then briefs him of their sea route and the total cargo that they're transporting. Captain Philip is wary of pirate activity off the coast of Somalia, orders Murphy to guarantee that all doors and hatches on the ship are closed and maintained locked. Soon, the ship embarks on its journey after completing the loading of its cargo. Captain Phillips organizes emergency drills at sea to ensure that the crew is prepped just in case the event of an emergency. And it paid off, Captain Phillips detects two little blips on the ship's radar screen not long after they begin the drill. The captain alerts Murphy about two incoming skiffs and instructs him to contact the U.S. Maritime Emergency. When Usme didn't reply, Captain Phillips orders a five-degree port turn and the skiffs follow. Phillips then instructs Murphy to notify the Yukumto of a probable piracy operation. Phillips is told by the female MTO officers to follow the protocols. The captain then can see that the men on the skiffs are armed now that they've gotten near enough. Afterward, Captain Phillips issues a warning to his 20-man crew, instructing them to man their stations. He picks up his radio and pretends to contact a military ship, in hopes of fooling the pirates. Azad is convinced by what he hears on the radio and tells his skiff to turn around and abandon the pursuit. Muse, on the other hand, is skeptical and tells his driver to pick up the pace. Captain Phillips increases the ship's speed and maneuver. The smaller boat is rocked by the ship's wave, but Muse tells Elmi to push at full speed. Soon, the boat's engine fails, leaving them stranded. Later, Muse and the others rendezvous with their mothership that night to make some repairs. Things got heated when Azad and Muse starts insulting each other. Then Azad points his gun at his rival but Muse has a wrench hidden which he used to kill Azad. Afterward, Muse takes Azad's engine and goes after the prized cargo ship again. Murphy sees them and radios for the captain. Phillips then announces the crew to head to their stations, orders evasive maneuvers, and radios UK MTO for help. Moments later, the fire nozzle activates spraying water outwards. Muse then radios Phillips to stop the ship but the captain paid no heed and continues causing Naji to fire his weapon and for them to steer closer. The fire hose doesn't prove to be an effective deterrent as Bilal, hooks the improvised ladder and each man then leaps onto the ladder and scrambles up the side and into the boat. Next, Captain Phillips orders the crew to take refuge in the engine room and not open the doors. On the way to the bridge, the pirates destroy all locks they come across. Then as soon as they reach the bridge they storm in, pointing their weapons at Phillips and two others. Muse approaches Phillips and tells him to relax, that no one should be if they cooperate. The pirates are ecstatic when they discover that it's an American ship. Muse then declares that he is the captain now. Phillips negotiates with the leader that they'll give $30,000 to leave them alone but to the pirates, it wasn't nearly enough. Moments later, the ship's power dies down after the chief engineer kills the switch. 
Muse demands to know what's wrong and Phillips tries to pacify them by stating that they push the ship to its limits hence, the power failure. Muse is curious about the rest of the crew's whereabouts. Phillips acts as if he has no idea. If the remainder of the crew does not emerge from hiding, he declares that he will begin shooting those on the bridge one by one. But the bluff didn't work, and so Muse figures that he'll search for the other crews instead. Muse takes Bilal and Phillips in searching for the personnel. Phillips advises that they investigate the ship from the top down, but Muse notices this and, after looking through a ship diagram, instructs Phillips to take them to the engine room. Along the way, Murphy almost gets spotted after Bilal checks on the storage room. After the close encounter, Murphy warns the crew that the enemies are on their way into prep and spread glasses in the engine room. When the search party enters the engine room, Bilal takes the first step through the door and steps on the broken glass, injuring his foot severely. Muse orders Bilal to escort the captain back to the bridge. Meanwhile, Muse continues searching and in the cover of darkness, Muse is ambushed by some of the crew members. A person tries to stab the pirate but luckily, he is able to shield the fatal blow using his hand. Afterward, the crew then radios the pirates on the bridge to inform them that they have Muse and will trade him for Captain Phillips in exchange for the $30,000 and disappear. Phillips takes the money out of the safe and gives it to the pirates. Meanwhile, Muse has been released by the crew. When Phillips tries to exit the lifeboat, Naji hits the captain and closes the door, and the lifeboat dips into the water. The hijacking of the Maersk Alabama and subsequent kidnapping of Captain Phillips as a hostage on the lifeboat is reported to the USS Bainbridge, a U.S. Navy ship operating in the Mediterranean is ordered to go west and intercept the lifeboat. Phillips offers to treat Muse's hand and Bilal's foot injuries. Muse refuses treatment but allows Phillips to tend to Bilal. The captain then nonchalantly pulls out a knife to cut the bandage, causing Elmi to yell out an alarm. Naji grabs the knife away from Phillips and orders Bilal to move away from him. Not soon after, a drone locates the lifeboat and the crew of Alabama who decided to follow the lifeboat and its captain. Soon, the Navy figured it will take the US warship at least 36 hours to catch up. In any event, the lifeboat shouldn't reach Somalia and so, the US sends members of the SEAL team. Hafan eventually contacts Muse and informs him that the mothership is having engine problems. He also tells Muse that Garaad is furious that Muse screwed the mission and they should head to Somalia immediately. The USS Bainbridge arrives, beaming spotlights and wailing its horns to alert the sailors on the lifeboat. Then, a man named Nemo speaks Somalian and contacts the pirates, offering them food and water to begin the negotiation process. Muse, on the other hand, informs Nemo that the demand is $10 million. Naji believes the Americans are setting them up and is wary of everything they say. Nonetheless, Muse agrees to meet with the Navy. Two gunboats then approach the lifeboat, demanding to see the captain. Muse directs Phillips to the lifeboat's door so they can see he's okay. Muse pushes Phillips back into the lifeboat while continuing to converse with Nemo. Food and drink are offered to him, but he declines. He will only accept $10 million. During the course of the conversation, Naji becomes increasingly agitated and fires his pistol. Fearing that Phillips had been shot, the gunboats were immediately ordered to pull back. Muse soon contacts Bainbridge and informs him that Phillips is fine, then confirms this with Phillips over the radio. Muse informs the CO that he would contact them when they are in Somalia. After dark, two other warships join USS Bainbridge. Back at the lifeboat, Phillips asks permission to take a leak. Muse allows him and the cap takes the opportunity to push Bilal into the water and swim toward the ships. The Navy spots them but is unable to identify which is which. Naji tries to shoot them but is stopped by Muse. Muse then jumps in the water and swims out to Phillips to pull him back into the lifeboat. Once they got back, Naji beats up the captain. Later, the SEALs arrive, assume tactical command, and radios Muse. The negotiator then starts mentioning the pirates' names and where they are from. He also persuades them that elders from their tribe are being brought to the Bainbridge and will help them arrange for Captain Phillips' ransom. Muse agrees to go over the warship to meet with the Navy and the elders. At the same time, the SEALs, armed with snipers position themselves. A skiff is dispatched to the lifeboat to attach a tow rope and retrieve Muse. They also install a listening device on the outside of the lifeboat discreetly. The sailor tosses a bag and tells Phillips that he should put on the shirt to stay warm and that he should stay in the same place. Back at the warship, the S. E. A. L. Sniper's mission is to find confirmed sightings of each of the three pirates on the raft and eliminate them. As instructed, Phillips dons his yellow shirt once the Bainbridge starts towing the lifeboat. 
Naji yells at Phillips to sit still since Elmi doesn't like it when he moves. Naji orders Elmi to shoot Phillips if he moves again. Still, the snipers try but fail to gain verified sightings of each of the three pirates as the raft gets closer. Fearing his end, Phillips grabs a pen and paper to write his last will to his family. Naji sees this and confiscates the materials. Phillips becomes enraged and assaults Naji, pushing and punching him. With Bilal and Elmi's help, they overpower the captain and tie them up. Naji turns on the radio and demands about the elder's whereabouts. He realizes that the elders aren't coming and that the Americans have been lying to them the entire time. Naji prepares to execute Phillips, believing that they would all die anyway. By then, tensions are high and Naji is set on killing the captain. There are two confirmed sniper sightings of Bilal and Elmi, but Naji is still not in sight. The commander then orders the tow stopped. That causes Naji to stumble forward and into view through a window. This gives all three pirates a visual, and the command gives the green light to execute. Philip screams as blood shoots all over him. Everything goes silent after that, with Philip screaming as his blindfold slides off one eye and witnesses the horrific scene. The order to take Muse down is given. He is placed on the deck, handcuffed, and detained right away. Muse hangs his head upon knowing that his crew died and that Captain Phillips is safe. The movie ends with Phillips being taken from the lifeboat and transported to Bainbridge, where his wounds are treated by a medic. He struggles to respond to her and is overcome by shock and sorrow. Phillips later inquires if his family is aware that he is safe, to which the chief responds that they are aware and that he will be allowed to contact them shortly. The captain reunites with his family months later. Muse was charged with piracy and sentenced to 33 years in federal prison in Indiana. The next year, Captain Phillips went back to sea. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and to help the channel grow.